Good morning, everybody. I'm Dr. Greg Pizzi, psychologist, relationship therapist, and board-certified sex therapist. I'm based in Miami, Florida. Today is to thir- Thursday, Thursday, August 13th, 2020. It's 926 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and um, I'm happy to be here with all of you. Uh, welcome to my live cast. This is episode number six. Woohoo! Uh, Thank you for all your support. Um, My emotion of the day is overwhelmed. I'm feeling overwhelmed. Overwhelmed with love and support and warmth uh, from all of you guys that have been supporting me and following me here in my efforts as a professional on my channel to bring and share my knowledge and experience about human thought, emotion, and behavior so that we can connect and work together to create the most fulfilling, rewarding lives possible. Uh, We all need to help one another and stay connected, especially now during this time in the world when being close and staying in close relationship with one another is more important than ever. So again, I am absolutely overwhelmed with the love and support that... um, you guys my fans have offered me i really appreciate your following and subscribing on my youtube channel as well uh which is i also have a channel called pizzi psych like this facebook channel as well as on badass psychology youtube badass psychology please go there and subscribe i would really appreciate it and share with your friends if you find it to be useful uh so uh, once again good morning I am Dr. Greg Pizzi, psychologist, relationship therapist, and board-certified sex therapist. I'm speaking to you guys today about uh, a few really important and interesting things. Um, Today is our theme, Ask Dr. Greg Your Relationship and Love Question. Ask Dr. Greg any relationship, love, sex, dating, romance-based question uh, that you have. The floor is open. Uh, As of now, I do have time for some questions. Uh, So the question is on the floor. Let me put the card out now. How do I do this? Um, How do I get my question out there? Uh, You can just enter it in the comments and I'll see it. Because I can't find where to do the card. Uh, Oh, here it is. Okay, question. You should show it should show up right now um, when I do this. It should show up on the screen. What is your question for Dr. Greg? Okay, the floor is open. Please ask me your relationship, sex, dating, um, romance question, and I will do my best to answer it as a psychologist, relationship specialist, and sex therapist. From my professional experience, maybe thrown in with a little bit of my personal experience if I think it's appropriate (laughs) and if I think it might be relevant. Because as a psychologist, I'm always making it a point when I'm working with you guys, my followers, my students, as well as my patients in my practice. As a psychologist, it's very important for me to be able to listen neutrally and empathically as a human being while remaining true to myself and who I am without injecting my own personal issues into your story. When I'm working with a patient, it's important for me to be myself, be who I am, honestly, but be able to put my own issues, fears, worries, or maybe judgments to the side and be there completely and fully for my patient so that I don't accidentally or inadvertently inject my own issues into the issues that the patient is facing and I can be there completely and um, and as neutrally as possible for for you know for the patient good morning leaner thank you for your question you are always there and I was gonna get to your other question as well the one that you asked last time that we didn't have time um, to get to so I'm gonna see if I can get to both of those for you today and I am going to have to send you uh, a certificate. You are my number one fan at this moment, and I really appreciate your being here. I'm liking your comment right now. 
Uh, Leaner, thank you so much for your support. You have great questions, and I'm going to be getting to that today. Just let me get to a couple other things, and I will be back to you. So thank you for being one of my number one fans. Um, you know, all of you guys are great, but please ask questions, comment, and subscribe, and, and that will really help me out a lot. So before we get to Leaner's question, how do I get the spark back when I'm being an empty nester? How do I get the spark back in my relationship as being an empty nester? So we're going to get to Leaner's question in a moment. Um, my website is www.pizzipsych.com. P-I-Z-Z-I-P-S-Y-C.com. Uh, please go to my website and uh, you'll find a bunch of information as well as opportunities to subscribe to my other social media and remain a part of this community because your feedback uh, is, is very, very important to me. This is my fifth live stream, which occurs on Tuesday and Thursday mornings. Today's feature is Ask Dr. Greg a question. I will be answering Lena's question about how to get the spark back in your relationship in just a few moments. Then I'll be giving you a sex and relationship tip, followed by a gratitude moment and an affirmation. Please like my page, Badass Psychology, on YouTube and follow me here on Facebook. So as a psychologist, um, I've learned a lot about psychotherapy and I realize now that there's so much more to being happy than, um, than meets the eye. And we have a lot more control and power over our life experience than was originally believed. So through metacognition or the study of thinking and the law of attraction, I've come to realize that I can help people a lot better uh, in that way. So um, that's why I bring you this channel. We can talk about how to connect and how to make our thoughts and our feelings as as satisfying and meaningful as possible by living the future you want today, creating your own life experiences through the power of the mind. So my mission is to help te teach people how to be happy, never suffer if, or feel bad again, and live the life of your dreams. Coming to our news item for today, I'd like to share a quote with you and get your feedback. The quote of the day is, most ideas are stillborn. Most ideas are stillborn. What does this mean to you? Um, the power of the human mind is one of the most underused, wasted, um, resources that we have in this universe every single thing that we have everything that exists has been thought up by somebody first somebody had to think up and imagine and design in their mind the clothes that you're wearing right now it wouldn't exist if somebody hadn't already pictured it in their mind um the building that you live in it had to be thought up Maybe it was you who thought it up. Maybe it was you who created the image in your mind. But somebody, you, an architect, uh, an illustrator, somebody had to think it up in their mind and create it first before it became reality. And the reason the saying is most ideas are stillborn is that most ideas that come to people's minds, which it's happening all day long every day, most people dismiss their ideas right away, saying it's not possible or it's not feasible, or, oh, I can't do that, or I don't have the money for that, or I can't afford that, or, oh, that's, that's too good to be true. Most ideas are stillborn. If an idea is not entertained and acted upon within the first several seconds of it being born, if that idea is not acted on or, or written down or scheduled or turned into something physically manifested, within seconds after it sparking in your mind, it's gone. It's usually gone forever. That's what happens with most, most ideas. So um, it's so important that we give, give respect and do uh, energy and time and attention to the thoughts that come up in our brains. 
and not dismiss right away because this is how dreams are born. Dreams are born uh, overnight and when we daydream. And when we throw something away instantly, we have no idea what that could have turned into that we dismissed based on a fear or insecurity or just simply not taking better care of our thoughts and our dreams. So that statement, most ideas are stillborn. I'd like to hear your comments and your feedback about that as well. Please share below or, or send me a message or like, like, uh, like this video if you think that this is an interesting statement. Um, I'm also going to talk to you a little bit today about what I referred to in my last video, which is called the non-resisted life. It relates back to this idea about allowing our dreams and our ideas to flow. And when we say a non-resisted life, we want to live a life free of resistance. Resistance against our good feeling frequency or our good vibration is a life that brings us stress, depression, and mood issues. When we are totally in alignment with who we are and what we want, and we're not trying to be somebody that we don't feel we are naturally, then we're living a non-resisted life. So an example of resistance would be if I am uh, sitting here talking with you and I'm feeling good and I'm feeling warm and connected. And, uh, and if, I, if I were really thinking, wow, I really enjoy, I really enjoy this person's um, company, uh, I just feel like I, I just want to just, I feel like just telling them, wow, I really like you and I, I'd like to see more of you. I'd like to see you more frequently. But a lot of people would stop that thought in their head and abort it right away thinking, well, maybe if I say that they're going to think I'm a freak. If I say, I, I can't just say to this person, oh, I like you or I enjoy talking to you. Can I see you again? Or I'd like to see more of you, or I'd like to do this more often, or can I see you again same time next week? People are often afraid of being judged. And when we do that, when we stop our natural flow of what we feel, we get depressed. We feel anxiety. We get fears. And living a non-resisted life is doing whatever we can to get rid of those blocks to be able to flow and be who we truly are. And um, every moment we're up against friction, resistance, contrast. There's things to be dealt with. There's arguments with people. There's traffic. There's bosses that get in the way of our going with the flow, so to speak. So when we can get out of our own ways and simply go with the flow of how we feel, say what we feel, and be as natural as possible, it brings us a much, a much more peaceful, rewarding, and f simply a fun life. So we'll talk more about the non-resisted life as we go along. I wanted you guys to know what that means so that when I bring it up, you guys will know what I'm talking about. On to our featured topic for the day. Ask Dr. Greg your sex and relationship question. Our question of the day comes from Lener, uh, who was wonderful enough to put the question nine minutes ago, just this morning, in the comments. And the question of the day is, how do I get the spark back when being an empty nester? How to get the spark back when being an empty nester? Okay, so this is a wonderful question, and it sounds to me like when you say that you want to get the spark back, um, that tells me that there already has been a spark there, that there already is something uh, that you're excited about in the relationship, right? Um, you know how when we light a fire, uh, you know, it starts with a little spark, right? It, all it needs is a tiny little spark to turn into, you know, a, it could be a bonfire. It could be a nice warm fireplace. It could be a huge explosion. Um, it, 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 you know, it just starts with one little spark. And that's the beauty of it is that usually when you have a fire, you know, you have a relationship that you value. 
that you obviously love and respect this person. You've made a choice to be with this individual on a regular basis and to recommit every morning when you wake up with this person beside you. You're recommitting to that person in that relationship by saying, okay, I'm here one more day, you know? And when you go to bed at night with that person, you're basically saying with your body language and your actions, okay, I'm going to give it another day with you. And that's all we should do in relationships is go with the flow. Go with the moment. One more day. One more day. It's going against our natural human nature to try to commit to a lifetime with a person. That's not how we were designed. We were designed to go with what feels good in the moment. And then if it feels right, we can go for another moment or another five minutes or another hour, another day or another week. But we have to feel good. We have to feel good. So just like any fire that burns bright and then starts to fade away from time to time, that's natural, right? A fire goes up and down. It's never raging completely the same unless it's an artificial fire or if it's, uh, you know, having, you know, fuel piped into it. Any natural fire is going to have its ups and downs. So one thing you may have noticed about a fire going with this metaphor is that even when a fire seems like it's going out, even when you think it's almost completely out, it takes a lot to get rid of that final ember that's sparked, that burning ember. There's always an ember that's still hot, that's warm, no matter where you look in there. It looks like it's totally out. But what happens when you leave a fire alone and you, and you stop thinking about it and you walk away? You might come back and find everything burned down, right? So there's always a spark there. The point that you want to focus on, Leaner, and, uh, and anyone else who's listening that may be sharing in this experience of wanting to get the spark back in your relationship, is to focus on those embers that are still lit. Focus on those little sparks that you know are there, that you feel every day, that you know still uh, you really appreciate and are excited about this person. And also focus on the things that you know spark that other person. Because uh, all it takes is that little spark. Um, you can do that. How do you do that? How do you get the spark back? Well, you focus on the brightness not on the darkness. You focus on the things that make you feel so good about that person. You focus on the times when the flames were fanning and the fire was raging. And you go back in your mind to when that was and you think, okay, what was different at that time? What was I doing? What was different about me? Hmm. Was I taking care of my body? Maybe a little more during that time? Was that the time that I was really um, paying a lot of attention to what I wore and really doing myself up nice? And was that the time I got that new hairstyle or that new haircut? I remember I felt really sexy at that time. You know, is that one of the times when the fire was raging harder? Or what is one of the things that your partner always has done that just drives you wild? Go back to that time and bring it into the moment. You can bring it up by talking about it, or you can simply just do it. Just do that thing that you know you used to love and that you miss. And one of the things you'll find is that the more you focus on the little things, well, not little things, but it may seem little at first, because when you feel like there's no spark, you're often kind of feeling like, it's more dark than light, but remember, there's always those exciting, fiery items in there that you can focus on. Whenever we focus on something we appreciate about our partner, shockingly, often it seems shockingly, but miraculously, we realize that there are three or four more things that pop up that we love about the person. It's so well, just by focusing on one or two things that we really are attracted to about the person that make us feel great, 
we start to see other things pop up in them that make us feel wonderful so that it just spirals. One thing leads to another. When we say something beautiful to our partner, such as instead of, hey, how come you don't tell me I'm beautiful anymore? Or why don't you ever do this? Or instead of that, that's focusing on where the fire's out. You want to focus on those burning embers, right? Those little embers. You want to fan and you go, you know, when you find the one that's burning, you want to get the fire. The way to do that basically is to just kind of find that ember and fan it, fan it. So how do you do that? You go up to the person and say, damn, you're so beautiful. You know, I, I never tell you that. I really need to tell you that more. Or... You know what? I was thinking, I really miss that way you do whatever. And is there any way I can get some of that tonight? Just jump on it. Just go for it. You know, coming back to that non-resisted process that we need to get out of our own way. Often we are preventing our own happiness and our own enjoyment with the thoughts and judgments that we put on ourselves. Um... This leads me into uh, the next question, which is uh, the next item, which is the sex and relationship tip. Um, I hope that this addressed some of your question, Leaner. Um, if anybody else wants to add to that, please add in the comments. Um, you know, any thoughts or ideas you have about how to uh, get, you know, reignite the fire how to get things fun any relationship that's long term requires extra thought it's not automatic um it's not automatic that you just be in a relationship and expect it to always be exciting you know human beings are not like that we get bored but when you care about the relationship and you love the person we have the thought power to decide that we want it to go differently and we can focus it wherever we want. Thank you so much, Greg. I see your, your comment. And yes, I am describing approaching it uh, from an I statement perspective. It's always the best way to, um, you know, the best way to connect with other people is to talk about ourselves. And that may sound ironic for a lot of people. It might sound a little weird because why would you want to talk about yourself? It sounds like you're being selfish. Well, we're actually supposed to be selfish. You know, human beings are supposed to be selfish. We're supposed to focus on what makes us feel good. Take care of ourselves first. That makes us more valuable and interesting to others. You know, the reason that you can't take care of others uh, or make other people happy or be responsible for the well-being of others is simple. For the simple fact that you can't think and feel for another. We can't think and feel for another person. So the only choice we have is to focus on ourselves. If I'm with you and I tell you what makes me feel good, if I tell you, wow, Greg, Greg, I love when we go on our magical mystery walks together. Um, it makes me feel so connected to you and so young and adventurous when we go on our uh, magical mystery walks and we talk and we share and makes me feel so light and free and I appreciate that time together. So I'm talking about what makes me feel good and that gives you an opportunity to then consider if you want to respond or not. But I'm not putting the pressure on you to be somebody you're not. And I'm not telling you what to do. And I'm not expecting you to do something because we should only do what feels natural to us in any given moment. So, Leaner, coming back to your question. One of the best ways to get the spark back is also works the other way around. Do things that feel right and natural and kind of challenge yourself. But on the other hand, I recommend that you not do things you don't want to do. So if your partner says, oh, I, you know, I really want to do such and such, or I really want to do that thing again, or I really want you to put on that, you know, um, you know, outfit or, that I got you. I mean, it's okay to go out of your way to please your partner from time to time. But if you really don't feel good wearing that, that negligee, or if you don't feel good wearing those shorts or that teddy, don't do it. 
don't do it because you can't be yourself if you're out of alignment out of alignment with who you are you're not required to suffer in order to prove your love to anybody that will come out naturally by you being yourself just gently say i'd really rather wear something different or i have another idea and let's try that because when you start to try to do something that doesn't feel comfortable then you really throw yourself off and we you know we, we we get off kilter and and that doesn't work either so i hope this was somewhat <laughs> comprehensible but let's continue the conversation after this uh in the comments uh continue to write your answers and your thoughts and let's keep this going i would love to have an you know additional back and forth on this greg leaner thank you so much um you guys are awesome. Always been there for me. I really appreciate that. So now I'm going to move off of the Ask Dr. Greg on to uh, the relationship and sex tip of the day. Here it is. Your current relationship is the result of the thoughts you have been thinking. All of that will totally change as you begin to change your thoughts and your feelings about the person. Your current relationship, thank you, Tom. <laughs> I really appreciate that. You can call it a live cast. That's just, I don't know if that's my word or what, but I call it a live cast. Um, please, you know, ask your questions and comment. Your advice and feedback is very valuable to me as well. Um, so what does this mean when I say your current relationship is the result of the thoughts you've been thinking? How is my relationship the result of my thoughts? What does that have to do with it? I don't control this person. No, you don't control the person, but you control your experience of the person. You control what you get out of this relationship. You control how you see the person. So if your partner is, you know, reserved and not wanting to interact, you have the opportunity to say to yourself, well, this person's just being a dick or... Well, maybe he's having a bad day. You know, it's that kind of thing. It's the way we think, the thoughts that we have literally create our situation. And that goes for relationships too. If you're not happy with your current relationship, change your thoughts about the relationship. As you begin to change your thoughts, your feelings will also change. And then you will find that your behavior and your openness, your vibe with the person will be more likely to allow and facilitate a, uh, a more open, um, stress-free relationship so that that person can go off of your vibe as well. One of the best ways to help somebody else is to get into the best place we can possibly be ourselves and then allow and be and just be present for that person. Uh, it really works miracles sometimes. So um, thank you so much. That was the sex and relationship tip of the day. I'm Dr. Greg Pizzi, psychologist, relationship therapist, and board certified sex therapist. Please go and follow me on YouTube as well. Uh, Badass psychology. Um, coming next to the gratitude moment. I'm grateful for the opportunity to discuss these important topics with all of you guys and share our experiences together. There's nothing more important than staying connected and helping each other make the most out of this beautiful life, this beautiful universe. And um, one of my uh, favorite quotes that came out of a video that I was doing, it just came out of me. I said, look at this place. I mean, look at this place. You know, there's a lot of crap going on, but we live in a beautiful planet, a beautiful world with so many wonderful people full of love going on and i choose to focus on that that's where I, my focus goes to the beauty of this world and i am so grateful and appreciative for all of you on next time next topic next week we're going to talk about why it's a mistake to ask the person you're going on a date with to tell you about themselves. Why is it a mistake to say to the person you're on a date with, okay, you know, picture you're on a date, um, what do people do? 
they meet, you know, they may meet. Usually nowadays people are meeting online, right? Okay, you meet online, exchange some pictures. Hopefully they're the actual real person. <laughs> In most cases they are. Um, unless you're going on a date with a catfish. But people will meet and they get excited and they go on the date and they're going to meet up. And they're so happy and they're so excited. Oh, this guy is so cute. Or, oh, this girl is fine. And they sit down and they're great. They get along. They have, you know, they, they chat, they talk. They may have dinner, may have sex, whatever. It doesn't matter. Then one of them asks the fateful question. So, tell me about yourself. We're going to talk about why that is one of the biggest mistakes you can, you can commit on a date. Asking the person to tell you about themselves. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with all of you next time. Finally, in ending, and Cindy, thank you. I see you there. Um, you're always there. You're always such a support. Thank you so much. I'm grateful for you, Cindy. Um, hope you're doing well. Affirmation. The affirmation of the day. There is a gift for me in everything that I experience. There is a gift for me in everything that I experience. I wish you all a wonderful, beautiful, healthy, and safe day. I'm grateful for all of you. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Have a wonderful day.